हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू इंजीनियर्स अकेडमी डू हिट द सब्सक्राइब बटन इफ़ यू आर हेयर फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम नंबर थ्री चैप्टर वन मैकेनिक्स ऑफ मटेरियल्स बाय आर सी हिबलर द प्रॉब्लम से दैट द बीम ए बी इज फिक्स टू द वॉल एंड हैज़ अफॉर्म वेट ऑफ एटी पाउंड पर फीट इफ द ट्रॉली सपोर्ट्स अ लोड ऑफ फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड पाउंड determine the resultant internal loadings acting on the cross section through point c and d so we are given that this beam is uniform having weight of 80 pound per feet so per feet its weight is we can say that small w is 80 pound per feet so the total weight of the beam will be equal to small w multiplied by the length of the beam so we can say that small w is per feet um weight per feet so that is 80 pound per feet multiplied by the length of the beam so the total length of the beam is 20 plus 10 so that is 30 so we will multiply this with 30 feet so feet will cancel out with feet and we will be left with weight of 80 into 30 right so 80 multiplied by 30 this is 2400 so 2400 pounds so this is the weight of the beam now this weight of the beam will act at the mid length of this particular beam so the total length of the beam is 30 feet so this 2400 pound weight will be acting at the midpoint and that midpoint is at a distance of 15 feet so let's um draw the free body diagram or uh, let's draw the force here so we will have that weight of the beam which will be acting somewhere here this is let's say the w and this distance is this is 15 feet now we are asked to find um the internal loadings at the cross section at c and d so for that um i i'm going to consider segment bd and i'm going to consider this uh segment bc so as you guys can see if we if we are considering segment bd and segment bc then there is no need to calculate um the support reactions at a because this will never come into our calculations so first of all i am going to consider this particular segment and this segment is segment bd so i will write segment bd so let's draw the free body diagram of segment bd so segment bd is so this is my free body diagram somewhere here is my point b here is my point d and remember that this this is 3 feet remember this is 3 feet right so let me let me write that this is 3 feet so if this is 3 feet then as we are given that um the beam has a uniform weight so then the weight of this small section will be we can say that let's say that the weight of segment bd will be equal to this w times the length of seg uh, segment bd so now the small w is 80 pound per feet multiply by the length of bd which is 3 feet so this will cancel out and the weight of segment bd is equal to 80 into 3 which is 240 pound and this weight will be again acting at the mid mid length so the mid length is 1.5 so the weight is going to act somewhere here at a distance of 1.5 feet so let me show that weight so the weight is going to act somewhere here this is wbd and this is 1.5 feet remember or we can say this is 3 feet divided by 2 and since we want to find the internal loadings um, at point d so let's say that the normal internal the normal resultant force um is let's say nd and let's say we have the shear resultant force let's say this is vd and let's say that we have md the, the internal bending moment 
So we, we want to find N D, we want to find V D, we want to find the resultant normal force at the cross section at D, the resultant shear force, the resultant internal shear force V D and the bending moment. So, for that we are going to apply the equilibrium conditions considering segment B D. So, we will have say that the sum of the forces in the x that must be equals to 0 towards the right is our positive x. Now, we have only this N D which is acting in the horizontal direction. So, this means that N D the resultant normal internal force this is equal to 0. Similarly, if we apply the sum of the forces in the y that must be equals to 0 in the upward direction is our positive y direction. Now, as you guys can see that we have V d in the positive y direction. So, V d minus the weight of segment B d this is equal to 0 or we can say that V d is equal to the weight of segment B d which is equal to 240 pound. This is equal to 240 pound. So, the resultant um, shear force on the cross section at point D is 240 pound and that shear force is in the upward direction. Now, to find M D we have to apply the sum of the moment about we can use the sum of the moment about point D equals to 0 or we can use the sum of the moment about point B equals to 0 it is up to you guys right. So, if, uh, if so if we apply the sum of the moment about point D this must be equals to 0 and the counterclockwise moment is considered to be positive. So, now as you guys can see that this weight of segment B D is producing the clockwise moment and this M D is clockwise as well. So, I will write minus M D minus the weight of segment B D. So, the weight of segment B D is 240 right. So, I will write 240 multiply by the moment arm. So, the moment arm of this weight from that point D is 3 divided by 2. So, we can say this is 3 divided by 2 this must be equals to 0. Now, we can say that minus m d is equal to plus 240 into 3 divided by 2. So, this is we can say 240 multiplied by 3 divided by 2 is 1.5. So, this is 360 or we can say that if we multiply both sides of equation by minus sign. So, this will become plus and this will become minus. So, this is minus. So, M D is equal to 360. So, this is 360 pound feet and as you guys can see that this is minus 360 right. So, the minus 360 means that the assumed direction of M D is not accurate. M D is actually in the reverse direction that is in the counterclockwise direction. So, we can say that M D the internal bending moment at the cross section at point D is 360 pound feet and it is in the counterclockwise direction and V d is in the upward direction. So, now this was the calculation for the internal loadings at point D. So, for the internal loadings at point C we are going to consider um, this particular part uh, segment of the beam. So, now we have segment B C let us say this is segment B C let me write segment B C. So, now for segment B C again we have to find the weight of segment B C. So, the weight of segment B C will be equal to this weight per unit length multiplied by the length of segment B C. So, weight per unit length is again 80 pound per feet multiplied by the length of this segment. So, the length of this segment is how much? So, you guys can see this is this is 5 feet right from here to here this is 5 feet. So, the total length is 30 feet. So, 30 minus 5 is 25. So, this is 25. So, let me erase this 20. Let me erase this. So, if this is 25 then this is 15 remember. Now, this is 15 feet. So, 15 plus 10 is 25. So, you multiply this with 25 feet. So, feet will cancel out. So, 80 into 25. So, 80 multiplied by 25 this is 2000. 
So, the weight of segment BC is 2000 pound and this weight must be acting again at the midpoint of this seg this beam, this segment right. So, the length of this segment is 25. So, the half of 25 is 25 divided by 2 which is 12.5. So, it will be somewhere here. So, now the weight of segment BC is going to act somewhere here which is equal to 2000 feet uh, sorry 2000 pound and it is at a distance of 25 divided by 2. So, 25 divided by 2. So, this is 12.5. So, it must be less than 15 right. So, from here from here to here this is 15. So, this will be somewhat 12.5. So, let me write this as 25 divided by 2 feet. So, now again we are going to find the internal loadings at C. So, for the internal loadings let us say this is N C. This is the normal internal loading. This is let us say V C um, parallel to the cross section and this is N C sorry this is MC. So, we want to find NC, VC and MC. So, for that again apply the equilibrium conditions the sum of the forces in the X that must be equals to 0 towards the right is our positive X there is no no other force in the X except this NC. So, this means that NC is equals to 0 the sum of the forces in the Y must be equals to 0 the upward direction is considered to be positive. Now, V C is acting in the upward direction that is in the positive y. This W B C is acting in the downward direction that is in the negative y. 1500 pound force is acting in the negative y. So, this is equals to 0. So, from this we can say that V C is equal to plus 2000 plus 1500. So, this is 3500. So, V C is equal to 3500 pound and this the direction is in the upward direction. Similarly, to find uh, MC we can apply the sum of the moment about point C. So, apply the sum of the moment about point C this must be equals to 0 the counterclockwise moment is considered to be positive. So, we, we, we have MC which is in the clockwise direction. So, clockwise is negative. So, minus MC now, this weight is producing the clockwise moment. So, we will write minus 2000 and the moment arm of this weight from that point C is 25 divided by 2. Similarly, this 1500 pound force is producing the clockwise moment. So, I will write minus 1500 multiply by the perpendicular distance which is 15 feet. So, multiply by 15 and this must be equals to 0. So, from this we can say that if I bring this M C to this side of the equation this will, will be equal to the same or we, we can say that M C is equal to minus 2000 into 25 divided by 2. So, let us find this. Minus 2000 into 25 divided by 2 minus 1500 into 15. So, this gives me minus 47500 pound feet and since we got the negative sign this means that the assumed direction of MC is not right MC is actually in the counterclockwise direction. So, we can say that the internal bending moment at point C has a magnitude of 47,500 pound feet and this is in the uh, counterclockwise direction. So, this is the solution of this particular problem. I hope this will help you in your learning. Let me know in the comments if this helps. Do subscribe Engineers Academy for the solution of such more problems from Mechanics of Materials by R. C. Hibbler.